Hello everyone, this is my almost three month review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've had it since launch and I want to share with you my thoughts uh, as I pretty much will probably wrap up. Maybe I'll do a six month review and a one year review after this uh, with his phone. So in one word, boring, but in the best way possible. That's not a bad thing. This is as boring as your refrigerator. It's as boring as your washer and dryer. It's as boring as your toothbrush. But that's exactly what most people need it to be. They don't need it to get in the way. If you want a phone that's not gonna get in your way, and it's gonna do the things that most people need a phone to do, right? Have good build quality, have an awesome camera. I think it's the second best camera, point and shoot camera I would probably give the Pixel 8 Pro the edge for that. Although I will say I get more consistent shots out of the iPhone than I do the Pixel 8 Pro, I think. But I get better shots sometimes with the Pixel 8 Pro. Actually, a good number of times. But it's neck and neck. It's not that big of a deal. No video camera on any phone beats this. Not one. Um, the battery, again, lasts forever. If, you know... You have a wife, a partner, a significant other that's not a tinkerer, not a geek like you and me, not a nerd like you and me. I'm talking just the person that you care about. You want to make sure you don't want to have battery anxiety because they don't really pay attention to their phone. They don't charge it up. This is the exact phone I want them to have. If it's my wife with my kid, I want, I want this phone in her purse. Right, because I know that this battery is gonna last forever. It's the best battery life on any phone. I think the only one that's comparable this year is the S23 Ultra. So it's outstanding in that way. So when I say boring, I don't mean I don't mean that as a knock. I mean that as like this is arrived as the mainstream. Let me put it to you this way. Okay. If you watch the jazz documentary with Ken Burns, and I know I'm, this is not a stretch, there's a point in which he's talking about Miles Davis and his making of Kinda Blue. And Miles Davis's approach at that point was to, in his words, get to the mainstream of America. And he busted Kinda Blue, right? Which is a classic, an amazing album. It's not Miles Davis with Herbie Hancock and Tony Williams, right? It's not Miles Davis on Bitches Brew. It's Miles Davis at the mainstream heights of his career with Kinda Blue right? That's what this is. This is mainstream brilliance. That's Apple, you know, all the haters, whatever. Apple has arrived, right? That's who they are. I prefer Android software, believe me, but you can't knock this phone and I'm not going to play those games, right? This is an amazing device. It's their best phone yet, as it should be because, you know, it's their latest right? You know, build quality, it, obviously it's amazing. All the phones though right now, I think S23 Ultra, the competitors, right? S23 Ultra, to a lesser extent, the folding phones. Uh, but I would say the S23 Ultra and the Pixel 8 Pro. Now, on sale, I would say the Pixel 8 Pro is the best bang for your buck. So Black Friday, Christmas time, holiday season, I've seen the Pixel 8 Pro at $799. And I think the best value of any phone right now is the Pixel 8 at 549. Okay, that's flagship level practically in every way. But build quality for this, the, the that, you know, the S23 Ultra, the Pixel 8 Pro, they're all solid. But the titanium build is wonderful. It's lightweight. Uh, I think they did a great job. You know, obviously the move to USB C was a good thing. I'm not doing this with my phone, so I don't care. It's not going to break unless I drop it. I'm not going to smash it with my thumbs. I don't, you know, it's just, that's for that's for clicks. And, you know, that, that gimmick works and that's fine. But I'm not doing that with this, right? The build quality is outstanding. And what I like about it is it's not a break in my pocket. I feel like between that and the USB-C switch, that was worth the upgrade alone. The lightness of the titanium um, the fill in my hand, the um, USB-C switch, 
those were worth the, the upgrade from my Pixel, excuse me, from my iPhone 13 Pro Max just by itself. Okay, but for this one, you know, camera's really good, battery's really great, video camera's unmatched, um, apps, you get more apps here than anywhere else, the app store is amazing, accessories, nothing's going to beat the iPhone for that, right? The software, meh, yeah, it's bland, it's it's pretty boring, I, I, I feel like, you know, I prefer Android, there's more customizations, I can put my calendar where I want, I can put my apps where I want, this, I, I you know, you're forced to do what Apple wants you to do, right? Like, you just, it's just there, right? You just put the stuff wherever it lands. <laughs> I mean, what can you do with that, right? Um, so that's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, that's pretty, pretty bland, excuse me. But that's what most people want out of their phone. They don't want to be messing around. They don't want to be tinkering. Again, they're not, they're not the geeks like you and me, okay? So in that way, it does its job. Just like the buttons on your um, washing machine, right? They just do their job. They're not there to be exciting. This software is not here to be exciting. It's here just to work. It's here just to handle it. It's here just to text when you want it to text, take pictures when you want it to take pictures, get out of your way. This is the get out of your way phone. But when you want the reliable camera, if I'm recording my kid running around all over the place, recording my dog running around, this is the video camera I want, right? So, you know, I know there's been a little bit of controversy or maybe some conversation around, I don't know about controversy, we're talking about tech here, but some, some conversation around, uh, you know, the phone of the year videos that are coming out and some people like this and some people don't. Some people proclaim this as the phone of the year. I'm not really going to say that necessarily, but it's the phone of the year for the most people, like the mainstream of society. Because this is exactly the kind of phone or appliance, and this is what it is, as I mentioned in my other videos, this is an appliance that, um, you know, that is the mainstream, that, Apple's, that shows that Apple is in tune with that, right? Um, this is, again, your TV, your refrigerator. It's what we all need now to function in society, and this does the job in a way that someone who doesn't have any idea about tech, right, can function on this phone. My mother, you know, who's in her 70s, can can use this, right? And it's not a problem, right? Um, you know, so that's what it's for. So again, people watching this video, tech geeks, you know, shout out to all us nerds. It's, this is not necessarily for us, but it does nerdy things. Like that camera, video camera is really good. You're not going to beat it. Right? I film most of the videos on this channel with this phone. That's one of the primary functions of this phone for me. Uh, iMessage, you know, that's going to you know, kind of go away in terms of being a unique quality because of the acceptance of RCS, which, you know, that wasn't, you know, a lot of people are talking about, oh, Apple's capitulating, Apple's giving in. That's nonsense. Apple ain't giving in to no one, especially Samsung, right? That's a move on, on Zuckerberg and WhatsApp. OK, because if they once they accept RCS and you can just go straight to Android, what's the point of having WhatsApp? There's no point. Apple's been hammering at Facebook and at Meta, right, for a minute. So it's a, it's a smart move, to be honest with you. They're going to, you know, I, I guarantee WhatsApp usage is going to decline significantly unless they, you know, um, kind of are lucky, like the way Spotify has been lucky once Apple Music came just came out and continue to, to get market share. But but that's different. You know, that's a choice. You know, I can understand Spotify has better software. Text messaging, you don't really have interface in the same way. It's They're all the same, right? So I, that's a move on WhatsApp. But, you know, once that happens, then I think people might be a little bit more inclined to move to Android who are on the fence about using an iPhone but it's a smart move on Apple's on Apple's part because I don't really think it's going to have as huge of an impact. And I think the future is not necessarily in smartphones; it's in other devices, and and they're already looking at that, right? So um, with the big headgear and what have you, um, Apple Vision or whatever it's called. So there's that. Anyhow, I don't want to get too off the tangent here. 
my first almost three months, it's been about two and a half, it's gonna be three months in a minute, so I'll call this the almost two month review. Um, you know, I think that right now we're pretty much at peak iPhone. I don't think anything else um, they really can do. The action button, you know, I think it's kind of gimmicky. It's cool, I use it for a flashlight. Uh, I do miss my on and off toggle, but now I just, you know, volume all the way down. It's not like, and that's the one thing I hate about Android, you're putting the volume down, then you got like, you have to do it again to make sure you get all the things you want down and make sure you're able to hear the things you want to hear. Whereas this, I just toggle the volume down. So so instead of having the switch, now I just I just toggle all the way down and I turn off my volume that way. And I use the action button for mostly for a flashlight. That's it. Um, I, you know, if you're... If it works for you, great. I, I just don't see it as being a big deal. Um, I think the dynamic island is nonsensical. I mean, I don't see the point. I, I do prefer it in some ways to the notch. I guess it's smaller, but I don't, I, I, it's not a big deal. It's whatever. iOS 17, yawn, but yawn is exactly what people want. They don't want to be wondering how to use their phone, right? Uh, my brother-in-law, he doesn't, he hates changing his phone because he hates, he doesn't even like updating his phone, okay? Because he hates the changes of the software. So for someone like that, this phone is perfect because it's, it's the same thing on an iPhone 11 as it is on this 15 Pro Max. It's the same thing on an iPhone 13 mini. It's the same thing on an iPhone SE3. It looks a little smaller. The screen may not be as pretty, but it's the same functionality. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, so, you know, just, you gotta keep this in perspective, right? It's not about the tinkering and the, and the geeks, right? It's not about us. But it's Miles Davis kind of blue brilliance, and it just works, right? It's mainstream. It's the mainstream of America. Um, what could they focus on? I, I think obviously this will be the model moving forward for probably your, you know, iPhone 16 and 17, just like it was for 12, 13, 14, uh, and then you had to change. So this is easily 15, 16, 17, because I don't know what else they can do. I mean, it's light. I mean, obviously, better camera, better battery, what have you. It's light. The build quality is great. It looks amazing. It functions well. Um, maybe now they can focus on the software. There have been rumors of an overhaul of the software. Maybe that's the direction they could go in or they should go in. And I think that would be ideal. Because this is kind of me, you know. Maybe they can find a happy uh, a medium between, you know, those of us who do like to tinker or like to customize a little bit and um, those who, who don't, right? Like, you know, kind of find somewhere in between, some kind of in-between space. So do I recommend this phone? Absolutely. If you want an iPhone, I mean, this is the one I would get. Um, it's not like before where I felt like, when I had the 13 or 14 Pro Max, and again, I had the 14 Pro Max for a minute and I, I sold it. I mean, I didn't sell it, I returned it because I didn't think it was much of an upgrade. Although I really like that space black color. Um, but, you know, I returned it. And, you know, it, if you, and, and again, if you have those phones, I don't think you really need to upgrade. Um, that's, you know, that's not really necessary. I feel like it is worth it, but it may not be worth it for you. Uh, especially from the 13 Pro Max, but I would say if you have a 12 and older, then I would definitely upgrade. It's going to feel like a, a, a nice refresh. refresh. Um, just to kind of keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah, I recommend it. If you want an iPhone, I say this is the best one to get because the iPhone 13 Pro, it's only $100 less. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's, I guess now, what, a couple hundred dollars less? It's... Um, the size is, unless you like the small size, I get keep going with that one. You do get the better camera here a little bit, but the weight isn't as big of a difference as it used to feel between like the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. Because I actually had both, I kind of went back and forth, but the battery life was so crappy on the 13 Pro, I had to stick with the 13 Pro Max. In this case, the the heaviness of the phone isn't to me as much of a factor. Now, if size is a factor for you and it's too big, well, then obviously go with the 13 Pro. I mean, excuse me, the 15 Pro. 
or even just a regular 15. But if you had the choice between the two and you can, you know, swing this one, you know, in terms of money, then I would definitely get this one. I haven't seen many sales unless you're going to switch carriers or, you know, I haven't seen really great trading offers, you know, especially if you have a grandfathered plan of some sort. So it's probably going to be a while before we see actual sales on this thing in a, in a way. I don't think we see them in the way you see them for Samsung and the way you see them for Google Pixel. But this is a great option if you can swing it. I will say, though, that the Pixel 8 Pro on sale at $799 and definitely the Pixel 8 at $549 are the best bang for your buck in terms of phone, in terms of easy-to-use software, in terms of uh, camera, and video quality is decent enough now. But if it's all about the iPhone for you, this is where it's at. Okay. Well, that's all I got on my almost three-month review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I hope you're well. I hope your family's well. And thank you for watching this video. Take care of yourself. We're almost at 500 subscribers. I'd really like to get there. Maybe about 30 some short. About 98% of you don't, <laughs> don't subscribe to watch my videos. I'm not sure why. But, you know, we're almost there. So hopefully when we get there, I can start posting some links. And then you can, you know... When I do the reviews, you can go right straight to the link so you don't have to do it on your own. All right, well, take care of yourself. Talk to you soon. Bye.